Welcome back to Squawk Box. 25, that's the number of days President Obama has uh, to make the, uh, his final decision on the Keystone Pipeline. Joining us now is Republican Congressman John Sullivan. He serves on the House Energy and Commerce uh, Committee. I don't, Congressman, earlier on we had uh, Jared Bernstein on, who was the Vice President's uh, Chief Economist. I don't know if he knows anything, although I wouldn't be surprised if he did. But he, he indicated he thought that they'd want to put this political issue aside and the president's going to want to focus on um, the election where he's representing the middle class and Republicans are representing the millionaires and billionaires and doesn't want this sideshow. So he's thinking he may just forego the, the political argument and, and go with it. But our guest host today, the senator, says uh, that that isn't necessarily uh, the consensus thinking right now. What do you think the president's going to do? Well, I think the president wants to punt this. He's had three years to make a decision on this, and he's failed to. I mean, this is a very important issue, and this is not a political issue. This is about jobs. Can and he economy. punt it? Can he punt it, Congressman? Uh, he can punt it. Yes, he has. A, he has. He's holding the key right now to open this up for us. He's delayed and drug his feet. The only people against this are the uh, White House and the extreme environment, environmental left. Uh, what would the a punt group. look like? He'd say, no, uh, go, we, we won't decide until after the election? I think he will do that, um, but we don't want to see that happen. This is going to create 20,000 jobs in America, private sector jobs. This isn't stimulus spending like the president's done. Uh, this is, it requires no taxpayer funded uh, at all. Right. Right. Uh, it's, it's it, people are saying that it, uh, you know, this is like so many things. The ideological divide is amazing because you say 20,000. I read in the New York Times it's like 2,000 temporary. I mean, it's weird the way you can demagogue every issue and, and have their own numbers. So when you say 20, people just dismiss it that are on the other side anyway, Congressman. It, well, they, yeah, they do dismiss it, but the facts are it creates 20,000 direct jobs building this pipeline in a time with high unemployment, millions of people out of work. It's very important. And not only that, we lessen our dependence on foreign oil. We're sending over a billion dollars every single day to foreign countries to buy oil. It's a massive transfer of wealth out of our country. We're subsidizing other countries, other nations, other economies. We need to do it here in the United States. Hey, hey, John, this is Pat Toomey. How are you? Hi, hey, Pat. How are you? Hey, uh, you know, this is a no-brainer for you and me. It right. definitely creates thousands of jobs, definitely diminishes our dependence on uh, energy from a dangerous part of the world. How broad is the Democratic support for this in the House? Well, we've had uh, support, uh, bipartisan support on measures to bring this forward. Uh, there, is, there is support. Uh, there are senators who the pipeline goes through their states, I think, would be in a tough position if they had to vote for something like this. Uh, it's, it's very important. I think a lot of Democrats and a lot of Republicans want to see this happen. It's going to create a lot of jobs. It's going to lessen our dependence on foreign oil. Um, you know, it needs, it needs to happen. Yeah, I, th I think we've got to grow bipartisan votes in both chambers to, to put the pressure on the administration to do this and get this done. Well, I think that certainly helps, Pat. I mean, uh, in the Senate, we can, we, we can get support over there, I think. I think in the House, we have support. We've had over 50 or so Democrats vote for bills regarding the Keystone Pipeline. I think we can get more. And, uh, you know, we've shown that bipartisan support in the House to the president, and he still hasn't done anything. Are you here, Andrew? I am. Uh, I Andrew, am. I would, we had Jared on. I kind of miss you being out there, but you look good in, in your day. But we had Jared Bernstein on, and uh, his, his take was that the president was going to go, not going right. to want to argue about this and was going to say, let's do it. I was kind of kidding. I said that the president will tack to the center here till he gets reelected. Right. Then I'll have Lisa Jackson out for gas completely <laughs> at the end. Yeah. afterwards. Uh, yeah, afterwards, I, and then not have to worry about it. Or regulate well, I, I feel like I've, Go I ahead. feel like I've called around in Washington, and I think the, I actually think Jared's not that far out there. I think there's a chance that he could I do try to tack to the center right. and do, do something like that. It's kind of a like really attack, a, a, a full tacking to the center. Uh, but I mean, it, do you believe do you believe that last week's decision to, to consolidate some of those departments was that a faux? It, what you would describe as a faux tax to the center? Yeah. <laughs> For someone who's expanded the size of government with yeah. two new to the I mean logarithmically, and then to say, oh, maybe we'll put the the well, one decent the, the one line, decent agency is the, is the trade representative. Right. That's the one guy, that's the one that we actually could use, and he's going to move that into the other, and that's somehow. Now I'm limiting the size of government. You didn't, you didn't laugh when you read that, Andrew. Did you take it seriously? Come on. 
Yeah, I, took, I took it. I, look, I, I actually gave him some credit. Did Jane Fonda take it seriously? I, thought that he was listen, I think he was listening, frankly, to some of the conversations we have on Squawk about this very issue. When you talk to Jane Fonda about it, I know you guys had a meeting in the minds, yes, yes. but when you talk to her, what Absolutely. <laughs> She's just off camera, by the way. So you want to talk to her She's directly. your other wingman. You got Brad on one hand, you got. Uh, She's burning an Exxon Mobil flag right, uh, right off the camera. So, Congress, um, what about a car? I mean, okay. <clears throat> if it gives the president an opportunity to tell to the center congressman is, is that uh, you just want it done you don't care whether it's political or not i want it done i think this president right now is going to say and do anything to get elected to another term um he's never been for consolidating government or or streamlining the process no, right. or, or no, anything no, but, like that but just hold on a second if he approves the pipeline and gives it the go-ahead we're not going to like that's not something he can take back right i mean no and by the way if he, help me out here. listen i think if the president decides he's going to move to the center and try to get some things done i don't care what his motivation is i'll right. get it done let's get the pipeline done let's get some deregulation uh, I mean, stuff you can no, say, no, Joe, whatever he's that willing that to do i want to take you can if say you stuff in your first term isn't it? Yeah, yeah. All right. well, if it's an actual <laughs> action then i think it's not faux right i mean unless i'm missing something joe if he says no, I think he says i am going to uh you know in the future do x that's a different thing from the, approving the pipeline getting the it going agreement on the extension of the book was Texas was not faux, but it was totally politically motivated. In, right. In its opinion. And he gave away some to his base, gave, you know, knew that they were going to get mad. So he, he figured out, and he'll give, he may concede, and, and his base won't be happy about this. Right. But he'll gain more on the other side from Georgia. Never mind the motivation. Let's take the policy if we can. Let's get the, it, let's get the pipeline built and bring all that energy into the United States. I think that makes a lot of sense. And maybe we you have do to too? tie it. I, I, Joe. And jobs. Joe, I have been a proponent that the only, that of the, the only one against the pipeline. environmental record of the oil industry but. and the gas industry for a long time. So, I Andrew, you're all cover them, and I this. see how they do business. I, look, you, you <laughs> don't don't put me in a corner here. I'm not. I didn't say you I was against I'm the kidding. pipeline. You know, I, you know, I, do I know. That. I, I love you. We know. We know it. Well, it's I'm, be, you're, I'm a little bit sad that your new wingman. You, you know, I it's thought. It's going to be a function of where Andrew goes to launch Joe, you are my wingman. All right. You are my wingman. We're going to get to talk to him. Who do you want to talk to? I want to talk to Senator Toomey. Guys, we are on small business. Congressman, thank you. And and we'll be checking back with you to see how this works. And you're preaching to the choir, obviously. Jobs, jobs, no no money going to people that hate us. I mean, it's a no-brainer. Anyway, thanks. Okay, guys, we're going to leave it there.